Hi friends, welcome back to today's vlog. I figured I would take you on a tour of our guest house. Follow the yellow brick road. Come on. Build, build this with the leftovers from our rip down of our patio. And we have a nice paved walkway. So for those of you who have been with us for longer than nine months know that we used to live full time in our refinished pretty, in my opinion, RV. And we were halfway through the pregnancy and Philip decided, hey, why don't we get a stationary home and travel out from here? Well, we became stationary and then the world shut down. So we are actually super excited and loving homestead life, but we also do really miss RVing and hopefully sometime, I don't know when, soon-ish, never, I don't know, sometime, we would love to get back into the RV. But until then, it is our guest house. So we were living in a two bedroom condo in California when Philip fixed up this RV in a storage unit. It was nuts and crazy and we are just so, so happy to be here and it was worth every hour to get here. Hopefully Philip thinks it was worth every hour. Probably not the painting. Painting was like a really big job but I think it was well worth it. because this space transformed from being a really dark, really dated RV to being white and bright and I love it. It's like one of my favorite spots. A year and a half later, we are giving you a full RV tour slash guest house tour, but I wanted to show you the odd and ends are still not finished. We ripped down the framing around the, the door to redo it. Well, we never did, but I'm actually kind of glad because you can see what the wallpaper used to look like and yeah this is what the entire rv looked like and i'm really glad that it doesn't look like that anymore um but philip can we put framing on at some point okay so we walk in the kitchen and there used to be some extra cabinets here ripping down uppers sounds crazy when you're going to be moving into an rv full time now that it's a guest house it doesn't really matter but it was actually fine. We lived in this full time. There was plenty of storage and I wanna actually say room to spare. They built this so amazing that we were able to comfortably put everything away. People think they can't do it. You can do it. If you wanna live in an RV, you can do it. It is amazing and we loved it. And there is plenty of storage and space. They make every single nook and cranny count. Okay, starting with our power panel. We have four slides in this RV. It is a heavy tank and we love it. It was perfect for us to... We have a guest already. Hello. Do you want to give a tour with me? Why don't we start on the floors? We put in the heaviest, thickest things you can possibly put in, which is eight millimeter laminate. I wouldn't encourage it unless you find your dream floors, which I did, which is eight millimeter laminate. And then we got sternos to go on top of the slides. Just to let you know, if you guys are going to remodel an RV, these stair noses are a little bit fragile, and if you step on them, they can snap off. To start us off, here's the deal. There's a travel trailer, mm -hmm. there's a full-on motorhome RV, and then there's what we have is a fifth wheel. Yeah. What's the difference, and why does it matter? One, a travel trailer is towed by a small SUV slash a small truck. Motorhome has its own engine in it, and it looks like a bus, and they're amazing, and they're super, super rad, and they can seat a lot more people. And super expensive, and you right. have to go to a special mechanic to fix the yeah. motor. Yeah, what we have, and what fit our family so well, is what's called a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. The reason we went for a uh, fifth wheel yeah. is because of its flexibility and its durability. This RV is about 300-ish square feet. We fully redid this thing. It looked brown and really outdated, and we <laughs> did this to it. Yeah. So the layout of our fifth wheel is that there's a back room, a living room, a bathroom, and then a full-on bedroom in the front. So the reason we picked this model was that we wanted to go on the road, but it was our dream. So we wanted to give the girls their own space where they could have a door that they could close and feel like they still had their own little space as well. So we'll start the tour back here in the bunk room. So this is the room that we can close off. It was a four bunk room room style. We ended up converting this into an office while we were on the road, but now it will probably be converted back into more beds, more space to sleep, 
and we'll keep the bunk beds. So this piece in the middle was a big, huge piece of furniture that took up a lot of space. We ripped it out because it was more important for our girls to have space to play on the floor. And so they could play back here while I was in the kitchen and not stepping on toys while trying to cook. And they had this entire space to themselves. Philip actually custom built these bunk beds. We wanted something that made us feel safer than having open bunks that our kids could fall out of. You want to show them how it works on the ladder? Yeah. Climb on up. Okay, this was your bunk, right? Yeah. Did you like being up here? Yeah. Yeah, that was your favorite. That was Callie's. And that was Callie's down here. Yeah. And I want to show you underneath the bottom, we had three cabinets that we left. And each kid had a pull-out drawer that fit the entire space. And I was able to fit all of their clothes. Each one had their own clothes. And then we had a combined pajama section. And it worked perfect. We didn't need any more than this. When we ripped this out, it felt like, oh my gosh, we're getting rid of more storage space. But it worked perfectly. We had another set for some hanging if we had some nice dresses. And we had some coats. And then... <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> this is real life RV guys is you always are fixing something and right now we need to fix the cabinet yeah that one was Callie's yep. that one was mine and then and then we both had pajamas right there that's right okay so moving from the back bunk room I can close you off in there or I can invite you into the main space this was the perfect amazing layout they have layouts where your living space is in the back and it has awesome windows but what sold me was we had a ginormous huge window i want to introduce to you my favorite part of the rv that sold me <laughs> was my pantry so this is a rarity when it comes to living in an rv a small rv traveling on the weekend not a big deal living in it full time this was a big deal and this actually was the difference between adding a foot of our RV searches because you look in length how big of an RV do you want this added a foot and this was worth the foot the smaller your RV is the easier it is to move around the easier it is to park we tried to try to stay small but we knew we were gonna live in it full-time and I wanted a pantry and this made a world of a difference on having a arm's reach depth of a pantry I could fit a ton all the way up, huge storage on top, all the way back. We were able to put Costco size bags of chips up here, all the way to toilet paper, filling the bottom. We just were able to utilize cans and pasta and just tons and tons and tons of storage. This was a game changer of making it just very comfortable living in an RV and not feeling like I had to go to the grocery store every three days. Forest River, Silverback. No, 2007 Forest River, Cedar Creek, Silverback. Yeah, right. Fifth wheel. 2007 Forest River, Silverback, Cedar Creek. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Try again. Hey, we have a 2007 Forest River, Cedar Creek, Silverback, 35 foot fifth wheel. Ugh, crushed it because that name is hard to say. Give mommy a high five. Okay, I remembered all of it. So what is fun about the fridge is we left the original wood color of the cabinets. I actually really like the color, but I love the white and the bright and the open feel. So leaving this as a little pop of accent is actually pretty fun. In the refrigerator, we have latches because you travel and it is like an earthquake in here while driving. So everything has to latch. There's little lips on the refrigerator. It's a tiny fridge and you think there's no way I can live with this mini fridge. Shockingly, I was able to put a ton of stuff in here. I don't know, how do we do it? I look at this and I'm like, are you crazy? The only hard part was the tiny freezer. We filled it with frozen fruit and that's about all we put into our freezer. So we've got some fresh eggs ready for our guests. We had a nice kitchen that was totally livable and manageable and awesome. We had just a lot of spices and things up here. We had our propane range stove top. Light it. Click, click, click. Nope. <laughs>
Now I gotta show you. <laughs> okay. Shh. That didn't happen. There we go. It's because we just hooked up a new propane tank. That is not because that's how it happens. It's just when you hook up a new propane tank, it takes a little minute. I had a big, medium, small pot. I could put all three on the stove at once. We cooked most of our normal meals. We didn't have to like totally dumb it down. The one thing that I didn't use a lot was the oven. It took me probably three or four months to finally be able to light the oven. There was just a special trick on pushing this in and turning it and lighting it and then turning it again. It just, it wasn't easy. So you know what we did instead? We ran an extension cord to our toaster oven. And you look at that and think, is that safe? Well, this is totally heat insulated and that's, I just think it worked out great. We made toast, cooked, heated things up. Oh, by the way, we don't have a microwave. We lived nine months without a microwave and then we moved into the house and didn't have a microwave. So this was awesome, this was totally great. One of the tricks that we learned early often, we learned a- Early often early on. <laughs> <laughs> we learned so much from watching other RV YouTubers. Your propane runs your refrigerator, your propane can run your gas range, and then your propane can obviously run the heat. We've got another guest. Got another Cat guest. Cat is coming. It Another was propane. so much more expensive to run propane, so it actually was more of an economical and storage thing to be able to use the toaster oven in the oven instead of, instead of the oven propane. itself. Yeah, and another tidbit that Philip did was he installed our reverse osmosis system. It's definitely a must-have for an RV, but this was like the unsung hero of our life on the road for a year. Okay, so instead of having the hose water that hooks straight into your RV, instead of just drinking that out of your faucet, or having to buy bottled water, wasting all that plastic, having to store all that water. So the issue with the reverse osmosis system is that it dumps wasted water and keeps the clean water in your tank. And so it's going to waste out two times more than you're actually keeping in your tank. So you are going to be filling up your gray tank really fast when you're using the reverse osmosis. So when you're on full hookups, not a problem. But when you are boondocking or when we were in Walmart parking lots, we learned very quickly that there is a lever on the bottom that we can turn off. We can use what's in the tank, but it won't recycle and make new water. It had to be turned off. Otherwise we would fill up our gray tank. We would be sitting in a Walmart par parking lot and notice that our sink was starting to fill up with gray water. It didn't make sense because we weren't using a lot of water. It was all coming from here. The one thing that I miss from a house is having a disposal, but these little mesh things fill up with the food, dump it in the trash can, you're good to go. Are you ready for my inexpensive, totally transformational tips and tricks? So paint is the biggest game changer and that is gonna cost a pretty penny because you're going through gallon after gallon. It is a lot. Adding paint is going to first and foremost change your entire space. Second, instead of changing the countertops and spending hundreds on a new countertop, a butcher block, whichever, that would be very nice and we would love that at some point. This right here is contact paper and this is what our counters used to look like. Again, the odd and ends have not gotten finished. Pretty awesome. Lastly, not subway tile, no, no, no peel and stick stickers. So number one, paint. Number two, contact paper countertops. Number three, peel and stick subway tile. So I learned something from all three. Paint, I chose white. I personally chose Sherwin-Williams High Reflective White. It is the brightest, most white you can possibly do. You don't have to go that white but the whiter you can make it, the bigger this space is gonna feel, the brighter it is going to feel. I would just encourage you for you to open up your small spaces is to use white. Second is the contact paper countertops. They aren't perfect. Uh, that doesn't bother me. If you are, if you can't handle the little nicks and crannies that just oh, aren't. Oh, you mean like these? Yeah, if you, if you can't handle the things that aren't perfect, RV living is probably not for you. Number one, but number two, don't do the contact paper, but I loved it. It held up pretty decently. This is actually essential oils that dripped on the countertop. That's what totally kind of damaged the paper, so don't do that. These held up for a year really well, and this was only, I want to say, less than $20. Subway tile, peel and stick, what I wish I would have done 
in the bathroom over there not a problem above where you are going to be cooking and it gets hot um, it is it does start to peel so I wanted to try to see what it was going to be like by just using the peel and stick by themselves as an experiment for you guys it worked out okay and so if you just are like I'm just not in the mood just put it on up call it a day fix it later I will be doing the spray glue on it and then putting some back up just because all of these um, just didn't hold on too well, but I still love them. So for the dining area, we actually found an Ikea table on Facebook Marketplace that we got for free. So Philip just sanded it, resurfaced it. It's not perfect, but we liked the color, just we liked the wood feel and we just bolted the RV legs that were already here. We spray painted them, added the topper and we totally transformed the space from being the old and dated. The other major thing I almost forgot was there was a bench here, but there was an also a bench on the other side. So that really just makes it feel really tight when you are using up the space with static furniture. So instead of having chairs that kind of, kind of scooch in and you have this like kind of freedom space, there was benches all the way out to here. So again, by taking out the bench, we took out a lot of storage, but having this kind of freedom space was really important as a full timer to feel like not so claustrophobic all the time. But if you take out the storage right away before you move in, then it doesn't feel like you've lost a ton. If you're able to store a bunch of things that we didn't need like all the time under here and made for a good secondary food pantry. We resurfaced the cushion. So we just took the same cushion that was here on the bench. We just covered it with a fabric that we liked. And mommy, Megan, Ma, I'm Mommy, Megan Kenjin, chair. That's right. Fabric, paint, flooring, fabric, paint, flooring, fabric, paint, flooring, take down the sconces, taking down that old dated things. It you're gonna transform your RV and your space so quickly and it doesn't have to be super expensive. So a lot of people redoing RVs are pulling down uppers because it does, it makes you feel really caved in. We did keep these because this was our homeschool, arts and crafts, lots of storage that we needed and because the couch was under, under there, we didn't mind it. Um, I do get a lot of questions on this couch. This is an Ikea I think it's the love seat size. It fit perfectly in this space. It's 65 inches, I believe, versus a lot of the other like standard small sofas were 70, which it could fit a 70. I just wanted to feel space. This is like the perfect size sofa. It's not a big, huge stretch out, but it worked perfectly for us. Okay, the other thing that is going to save a ton is keeping everything you can. We kept the blinds, which I first thought were like kind of dated and ugly looking, but I actually learned to love them. I love the two uh, ways of having a shine through and a blackout version. Um, and honestly, I kind of like the taupe color with white anyways. And then also handles and knobs and brackets. You are going to spend a pretty penny if you want to replace all of these a lot of people will spray paint them. I wanted to just see what it was gonna be like and I ended up loving this look. So this is the original and I, I love it. So that worked out well for us, not having to spend a lot. Okay, so this section made Philip add a ton of hours to fixing up this RV and I apologize partly, but partly love it. So I don't know, but I also am very thankful. This turned out to be our coat hanging rack. So we were able to put hooks up here, have everyone's jacket. We took the entertainment that was here, used that space and then kind of cut into the wall to make this whole space and then made some little faux shiplap that never totally got finished. With a pencil, I might add. I like the pencils. If you Sharpie straight onto your paint, it's gonna bleed. And that was just too much work for me when I had two little ones in an RV and cooking and cleaning and all of that. But the pencil, I could do. I could do a shiplap pencil, so that's how we ended up doing a ship lap. Do you remember what caused me to make you open this whole thing out? Mm -mm. Remember I said I was going to do a bench there? <gasps> That's right. We were going to have a fold down bench right here and have our shoes put on and off our shoes. We yeah. didn't have the bench, but we did have a mat right here. 
there was a no shoe policy in the RV because this is a small space and it can get really dirty really fast. However, you can clean it up really fast, which we really, really, really love. So the last lesson when we first moved in is how important it was to really make sure you got all of the tiny little rocks that you think aren't there. We had to vacuum and like dust all of the floors before we slid in because this happened, this rock happened, I think our first trip out. And that's fine, not a big deal, but it totally cut into our floors, our beautiful floors that we fell in love with. Before we go into it, Philip turned this into extra storage, so that was kind of a perfect junk drawer, if you will, for your flashlights and your screwdriver and all the things that you like randomly need, had like a space for. So coming on up, we love this layout as well because we come into the bedroom and there's two doors for the bathroom. So if I come into the bedroom, I can access the door into this way into the bathroom and from the hallway the girls can come up and use the restroom that way. It also makes it not feel as claustrophobic knowing that you're in here and not feeling like I need to get out. You have an exit both ways. That was like I really like the flow of this bathroom. And then this, this was amazing. Everyone got their own shelf and it was all we needed. It just, the storage in here. Love it. Okay, so each person had their shelf. The girls had a shelf. I had a shelf. Philip had a shelf. You could use it as you wanted. <sighs> Memories. Uh -huh. I miss living Memories. here. Do you miss living here? I do. I loved it. I hope we can get on the road. I had to finally say, Alex, you can't all have all the design that you wanted. Like I imagined like a round mirror up here and all of that, but no, I needed to leave the storage and it was very much a game changer. We had all of our, I mean, the storage in here. They just designed this it? really well. We never changed the countertops in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, another major reason we loved this layout was this is totally a shower, but the lip is so high. This was perfect for our three and four year old bathtubs. And honestly, if I really needed to soak my bum bum and my feet, I could technically take a bath in here. I could. It was, and I don't know how, I was able to take hot showers, like full length hot showers. Um, you look like Buddy the Elm. <laughs> uh, it's a small, it's a small, it so is a small shower. So we reconfigured this from what it was. Oh, that's right. There was glass doors. And there was glass doors. Mm -hmm. We really, we wanted kind of a minimalist concept. So this used to be glass and it made the bathroom feel really tight. And so putting in the curtain, when you're sitting down on the toilet, you're not covered with like a glass and a wall. It feels better to have these walls down. Philip installed this. This is just a few dollars on Amazon. What would you even call this? It was like a flexible trap that you installed. And these are just little office rings. Yeah, those are literally from like an office supply store. Yeah. So we have some more um, peel and stick backsplash. The nemesis of everything that Philip just never mm, wanted to do any RV remodel ever again and I apologize I picked flooring that were pretty that was pretty it did not clip together well it chipped it chipped crazy. while we were installing it everywhere literally this chip had to just stay because it happened after it was already installed it came actually chipped already it was a nightmare it is really pretty I'm it was like $50 just for this section of flooring but it really does look pretty I it, really it do like the floor it, it brightens, brightens it up space but so the reason that people do white everywhere is because it makes small spaces look big. Yeah, and yeah. it makes you kind of just does. feel refreshed. It does. So the white concept was actually a genius concept. Yeah. And it's not overkill in an RV because an RV is so small. So small. But yes, this flooring was absolutely yeah. awful. Don't I would do your research on the type of flooring. So we kept ripping out so much in weight that we were able to add it back in the flooring. I probably would do just peel and stick vinyl in the future just to be able to throw the flooring down and not have to clip it together. Um, it's just vinyl has an off gas and yeah. so we were trying to get pregnant and I wanted all toxins to be totally away from me so I wasn't really looking to have off gassing from my flooring. So same thing, instead of um, doing some new butcher block countertop, we ended up doing a um, contact paper again. We had a lot of storage. 
These are deep drawers. Our bed is a Betty's bed, so it, it is like almost like a sleeping bag, so it unzips. The girls also had them. They are in the house now. It really helps them teach them how to make their beds. I do believe we have a 20% off coupon still. I will leave it down in the description if we still have that. This is part of the reason why we loved having a Betty's bed on here is so that way we didn't have to remake the bed every time we lift it up to get our shoes. This was our shoes and jackets all down here. So we put our regular queen mattress in here instead of an RV queen. An RV queen is five inches shorter, um, so technically that fits better, but because it's a memory foam, it squished fine and totally fit, and we just liked keeping that in here. They actually have a design where you can have a king in here. Um, we had a king in here. We shrunk the platform because it was more important for us to be able to walk around here. Otherwise, the king platform came out to here and you wouldn't be able to walk. You would have to climb over the bed. And that was a sliding glass mirror. Oh, <gasps> that's right. Remember the girls were jumping. We took off the doors, at, took off more weight, added something super light. Philip changed this for me. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you did this for me. This used to be drawers. Look at that. We never finished painting it. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so this used to be drawers. And the drawers went, they ended here and they were this wide. And I thought, we need to utilize every inch of space because I have a lot of clothes. Yeah, but do you remember how much we, we said we ended up getting about seven or eight, and no, it was about nine square feet back. It was back. huge. There was all this extra there space. There was that we so got back, much extra face space, space back there. But the whole thing had to come out. We had to do the floor. It was a total joke. And it, that's so much time. But. Lot it really, time. really was worth it. Yeah, I mean, to look customize. how much clothes I could fit in here. We hung stuff. We had platforms. We did not install the washer dryer combo that you can put in right here. We ended up just doing storage. If you lived in here long term, maybe you would want a washer dryer. I I enjoyed it as storage. It was fine. So if you guys have any questions about our RV remodel or anything about the RV, um, go ask me on Instagram because YouTube has taken away our comments about two years ago. We loved this space. It was a dream. What else, Philip? There's so many things that changed so quickly for us in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously, we roll with the punches really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do miss traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I do miss meeting you guys on the road. I know. I, that's the biggest, like, the biggest 2020 downer for me is that we're not meeting people on the road. Yeah. And that was, like, the reason, the reason that we did this whole RV mm -hmm. thing was to go so and meet you guys so many of you guys, road. and you guys are amazing. Like, yeah. I am so thankful for all of you that we did get to meet and yeah. hopefully at some point, yeah. sometime in the future, yeah. we can meet more Huge, huge, huge goals for us is to come back on the road yeah. and to connect with you guys and to just love on you yeah. and teach you and show you how to let your love multiply even more. Yeah. But we love you. Thank you guys so much for being a part of our RV tour. Like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for doing that. It allows us to make more videos for you. It allows us to be able to connect with you and to be here for you. You guys are amazing. We're preparing for you. And go ahead and follow us on social media and ask us any questions that you might want. If you guys have any further RV questions, go and find Alex. Yep. We love you. Go let your love multiply. Bye. Bye. Ready, go. Please let me in.